you have been practicing and studying your art for countless hours and you have been improving. But then it all feels pointless when you see a video of an 8-year-old Chinese kid doing your art 10 times better. It makes you feel like you are not talented. It makes you feel like maybe this kid is just special. But then that just feels like an excuse and maybe you should just practice more. But then uh, how far can you really get by just practicing more? How relevant is this inherited talent that some people seem to have? I'll tell you what's happening. First, does inherited talent even exist? Can you actually be born with a special talent? From what I have seen, the real advantage that these super talented kids have is that they started very, very young, like probably two or three years old. So basically they began learning how to play the piano at the same time they were learning how to speak properly. Depending on how you define talent, you could consider starting at a very young age to be inherited talent. The other thing you have to consider is genetics. If you were born with large hands, you do have an advantage uh, playing the keyboard. Again, depending on how you define talent, you could consider your genetics to be inherited talent or not. What really matters is that regardless of inherited talent being a thing or not, is that these super talented kids do exist. So let's talk about how you compete with this. The most popular posture regarding talent is that you have to assume that you will probably never catch up to these kids' talent. You shouldn't hope to become the best in the world at anything and instead you should set up realistic goals for yourself. So instead of trying to become the best in the world at something, you should try to be the best you can be for your own self. This posture, in a way you could say that it comes from a business perspective. In a business, you have to assume that your competition is always trying to catch up with you and it is always trying to come up with a better product than yours. In the case of talent, you have to assume that there is always someone trying to become more talented than you. This posture makes a lot of sense in its own way. However, it is not the only posture. I want to give you a different posture that is actually based on science. More or less, let me explain. In science, when you are making an experiment, you have to take in consideration every variable that may change how your test is supposed to behave and what is supposed to test. For instance, when you want to measure the time it takes for something to fall to the ground when you drop it from a given height, you have to take in consideration the height and the strength of gravity. In this case, since height is given, you only have to worry about the strength of gravity. You could use the standard uh, measurement for gravity's strength, which is 9.8 meters per second, and your experiment will come out just fine. But if you want your experiment to be as accurate as it can possibly be, you have to take in consideration things like altitude and latitude because those things can alter uh, the strength of gravity. It is unlikely for these variables to have a meaningful impact on your results. But in a scientific context, you have to be as accurate as you can possibly be. Now, in the case of talent, when you compare yourself to someone as talented as Ling Ling, in this scientific context, you are actually testing for your chances of becoming a successful artist against someone as talented as Ling Ling. So, if you want your experiment to be as accurate as it can possibly be, you have to take in consideration every variable that may change how you compare to Ling Ling. Could you guess what kind of things may change how you compare to Ling Ling? How about everything that happens in real life? God forbid for Ling Ling. 
but it might just happen that Ling Ling's mom suddenly decides that music is not a viable career anymore and she stops paying for Ling Ling's piano lessons. If that happens, your chances of becoming a successful artist compared to Ling Ling will increase. It would be very weird if that actually happened, but if you want to be realistic in this scientific context, you want to be as accurate as you can possibly be. Obviously, this approach is overly optimistic. Being overly optimistic is bad for you. However, comparing yourself to the single most talented person in the world and also assuming that this person will never make a mistake in its life is just as bad. Both perspectives take a very extreme posture. I am talking about these perspectives as if they were two postures you have to pick a side from. But in reality, these are just perspectives for you to analyze. Sometimes the business approach will make more sense and some other times the scientific approach will make more sense for you. In any case, you do have to keep in mind both of these perspectives. The only goal I had with this video was to show you the other scientific perspective. I felt like most of the world only considers the business approach and I do believe that it is important to see the whole picture. And that is pretty much the truth about talent. If you like these videos where we talk about art, subscribe. If you can come up with a different perspective on talent, leave a comment. And if you want to support this channel and me as an artist, visit my website diegoelz.com. You can find my work there. My name is Diego Elizondo and I thank you for listening.